For months, even years, much of the American mainstream media downplayed or ignored the obvious, the unmistakable signs of Joe Biden's cognitive decline. After his disaster of a debate, the about turn from many in the liberal commentariat has been spectacular. Media pundits, as well as Democratic donors and party bigwigs, all came for Biden. He was never going to survive that. One commentator who can honestly say he dissented from mainstream opinion and saw this coming is Cenk Uygur. Having done a stint as a host at MSNBC, he is the co-creator of an online outlet, The Young Turks. Uger has used his alternative news platform to warn that sticking with Biden would be disastrous. Last year, he even launched his own short-lived bid to become the Democratic candidate. He insisted he wasn't in it to win it. He was just trying to draw others into the ring that someone, anyone, needed to challenge Biden. Uger released a campaign ad that focused on the U.S.'s continuing support for Israel, its war on Gaza, and what that support costs American voters and their families. You're going to have to put those eggs back. They don't like eggs anymore? No, they like eggs. But we have to set that $7 aside for killing Palestinians? What? I mean, don't we give Israel $4 billion a year anyways? Yeah, and now we're giving them another $14 billion. Cenk Uger joins me now from his home studio in Los Angeles, California. Cenk, it's been a while since we've had you on the Listening Post. It's great to have you back. Now, you've been warning for the best part of a year that the Biden campaign would eventually implode over the aging issue. What were you seeing that other political journalists were not, or were they seeing the same thing you were, only not saying it? Yeah, there's a couple of factors here. Number one, I was looking at the underlying numbers. Uh, his approval rating has been in the 30s for over a year. An incumbent in the 30s almost never wins in the U.S. So I was startled that others were not making that uh, realization, especially because he had lost Hispanic voters, he had lost young voters. These are stunning developments in American politics. I think the number one pe reason that people don't see it is because they live in a bubble. And everyone around them says, oh, no, everything's fine. And why do they think that in Washington and in mainstream media? It's because um, it's very insulting to the powerful if you note things about them that are unfortunate. And then you might lose access. And so there are repercussions. And last reason, Richard, is because they don't talk to enough real people, non-political people. And every time I talk, talk to a non-political person, the number one reason they would give for not voting for Joe Biden was he's too old. It was obvious. Even after Biden's historically bad performance in that debate, many of the big names in the U.S. media still kept backing him, despite the, all the signs that you're talking about. What has this story exposed to Americans about the behavior of their mainstream news outlets, the denial, the delusion that we were getting? Yeah, it is a bit of a heartbreaking uh realization, and I had it late in my career, very late, uh, but uh, most of news is not actually news. It's marketing. Uh, it's marketing for the powerful. And it they have different clients, basically. Fox News does marketing for right-wing billionaires and uh, multinational corporations. CNN does marketing for uh, status quo and corporate rule. MSNBC does it for the Democratic Party. And I know I was a host on MSNBC. And they told me to not criticize the Democratic Party. That's not real news. That's just a propaganda arm of a set of powerful people. One term that's entered the American political lexicon recently is blue MAGA. Now, you've been using that phrase for a while to describe the Democratic version of Trump's Make America Great Again movement, both on the ground and in media outlets. What have Americans learned about blue MAGA media outlets over the past month or so? since the debate. Yeah, at the top is the donor class. They actually control pretty much everything. Right underneath them is politicians, but they're not that interesting. They're just servants of the donor class. And then you have the media underneath them. And the media is the marketing arm for corporate rule. And they're the most powerful uh, weapon, I would say, for the rich and for the donors. And, and so at the very bottom is the actual people. And those folks are often deluded, red MAGA, blue MAGA. They live in a bubble where they don't, they can't see straight. 
So people in red MAGA actually believed that Donald Trump won the last election. People in blue MAGA actually thought that Joe Biden was young and dynamic. Um, but where did they get those opinions? They got them from media and media that is paid to be the marketing arm of these different groups of wealthy people. So they actually meant to deceive them, and they did. Let's talk about the process. You wrote this week that the Democrats had a chance to electrify the country with an open convention, the most exciting dynamic process in the world to take place, with various candidates, governors, senators, various members of the party, perhaps stepping forward. That's not happening, but you've also been praising Kamala Harris's great start to this campaign. So where do you stand now on the party's decision to effectively anoint Harris? Right, so I was positive that Joe Biden was going to lose, and I would say things like he has a near 0% chance of winning, uh, and people said, oh, that's outrageous. Now, afterwards, they acknowledge, yes, even his top advisors thought he had no chance of winning. Now, I'm positive that an open convention is the better way to go. Uh, the reason for that is that if you test your candidates, you will see how strong they are. The pro number one problem we had with Joe Biden was that we didn't test them. So if we have an open convention where they all vie for the delegates, then the strongest candidate comes out. That's definitely the best process. Now, having said that, Kamala Harris locked up a lot of these delegates. They're just pledged. They haven't voted yet. And she's come out of the gate very strong with a couple of savvy political moves and some really good speeches. So if she was strong enough to lock up these delegates quickly, well, that shows you that she might be a good candidate. Uh, I don't have an opinion on which candidate it should be. I have an opinion that we should pick the strongest one so we can beat Trump. There are so many forces at play that came together to unseat Joe Biden. There was that debate. There was the change in the media discussion and the donors. And what role have alternative media like yours played in this? Is this a moment of vindication for independent media outlets like your own? Well, I appreciate that question, and, and it definitely is. Uh, and we had a swarm of viewers come to us after Biden dropped out saying, you were right. I, and a lot of folks said, look, I doubted you because I'm hearing different things. I'm hearing something from CNN and MSNBC that I'm not hearing from you. And one of our viewers said, look, I tried to introduce my parents to you, but it was so jarring because what you're saying is so true and so different than what they're hearing from mainstream media that it takes them a, a little time to adjust. But I, I think that uh, independent media here was greatly vindicated. I feel um, terrific about it because it's not just that we're doing real news, it's that we're able to break even our own bubble. And again, if you don't live here in America, it's hard to understand how overwhelming the propaganda is. So if you just say normal, rational things, the rest of the media attacks you with great vigor. And, and, and it takes a lot to withstand the, those kind of attacks and gaslighting that happens perpetually. Last question for you. The other great divide in American media, mainstream versus alternative, has been on the Gaza-Israel story. Biden's complicity in Israel's genocidal war cost him critical support amongst young voters. Do you foresee Kamala Harris changing that policy in any significant way? Because how else can she get those votes back to the Democratic Party, those young voters? Yeah, uh, so yes and no. Uh, I think that she will change the rhetoric a little bit. And I think that there's some chance she actually, in her heart, does believe uh, that Israel should let up uh, on the Palestinians. But now the heartbreaking part is that, no, she will not change the policy. Uh, and here, the American people have already moved. Here, this is another giant win for independent media and social media because we broke the hypnosis that the American people were under. Uh, we talked about propaganda and marketing for mainstream media before. There is no issue that they've done that more for than on Israel. And it was overwhelming and you couldn't fight that machine. But now through social media and independent, independent media, we've swarmed them and we've changed the American electorate's opinion, especially for young voters. So that is why Kamala Harris has to change her rhetoric to try to win Michigan, to try to win over younger voters that the Democrats desperately need. But the donor class here is gigantic and their power is overwhelming. So until we have a bit of a political revolution in America where a progressive that's in my camp uh, wins the presidency, 
there is no way that they'll change their uh, opinion on Israel because they don't have an opinion. They only have checks. APAC completely controls the U.S. Congress. And you saw a spectacular example of that yesterday when they were all giving standing ovations over and over again to one of the worst war criminals uh, in our lifetimes. Cenk Uger, great work by you and your team at the Young Turks. Keep it up. And once again, great to have you back on the air here at The Listening Post. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Now hit that like button and leave us a comment to let us know what you think about anything that we covered this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Does anyone really call it X? Facebook and Instagram for updates from the show. Links are in the description.